your seats if you can. And then we honor the Lord on today for being in our midst. Amen. I am Elder Melvina Carpenter from True Light Healing and Deliverance Ministries. Amen. We honor the Lord for the grieving family and friends. On today, honor the Lord for my pastor, Melvin Wright in the back. Amen. And Evangelist Kathy Wright in her absence. Amen. Honor the Lord for the pulpit constituents. Amen. But a special thanks to my husband, Mr. Carpenter. Amen. Honor the Lord for our musicians. Amen. But to our to True Lights musician, Elder Antonio Holmes, God bless you. Amen. Amen. To the Bolton singers, bless you. All of these people behind me, amen, are my friends. Yes, yes. Amen. Pastor Blake and Prophetess Peoples, Elder yes. Rivers, amen. And once again, my husband, Minister Carpenter. Amen. To the grieving family, amen. Our prayers and sympathy are with you. Yes, yes. Amen. I have known the Hayward family for quite some time. Mama Edith is a dear friend. Yes. And Patrice is. One of my best friends. Amen. Amen. So when we got the call on Friday night to come, Amen. Our prayers were certainly going up to heaven for you all. Matthew 5 and 4 says, Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So I want to encourage your hearts this morning. That if you're grieving, if you're hurting, the Lord is near the broken heart. Yes, yes. So you don't need to feel alone. Because the Lord is there to comfort you. Amen. He is our Emmanuel. Yes. He's right by your side. Amen. And the thing about grief is, it doesn't have an expiration date. It doesn't end in six months or it doesn't end in a year or three months from now when people expect it to end grief is an ongoing circle with several dimensions but it doesn't matter what dimension you're in the Lord is with you all the time because he promised to never leave you nor forsake you Revelation 21 promises that there will come a time where there will be no more mourning. For he will wipe every tear. I'm looking forward to that day. He'll wipe every tear from your eye. I liken grief to a muscle spasm because it hits you at times when you least expect it. You can be laughing one moment and a tear can drop from your eye in the next second. Has anybody ever been laughing and crying all in one breath? I've been there too. Sometimes I'm still there. But I'm so glad to know that I'm never alone. God is always with me. And he's always with you too. Yeah. He said, if you make your bed in hell, All right. I'll be there with you. Amen. So that's not my message this morning. But I wanted to encourage your heart. Those of you who have your Bibles, if you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I asked the family what they wanted on this morning and <clears throat> Mama Edith and Sister Patrice said words of comfort but on last night Patrice said just slow because I'm wise enough to know that some of you I may never see again and so many times we have the opportunity to stand before God's people. 
We want to encourage you, but we want to give you God's word. Because he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And for some of us, the only time we come to church is for Mother's Day, Easter or Resurrection Sunday, or for a wedding or a funeral. Scripture says it's only because of the grace of God that we have not been consumed. The song that the Bolton singers sung was there's going to be a meeting. And the thing about this meeting is, is that it doesn't matter what your last name is. Or what your bank account holds. Or what gifts and talents lies within you. You're going to have to meet Jesus one day. And judgment will be held. Therefore, we have a choice. Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. There are two lies that the enemy tells the most. One of those lies that the enemy tells the most is that we still have time. If we could talk to most people who are laying in the grave, most of them would say that they didn't know that it was their time. <clears throat> From the time that I was a little girl until now, I've been hearing that we're living in the last days. We're not living in the last days anymore. I often tell my children Jesus is on Interstate 26. He's right around the corner. You don't have time to waste time. Being baptized as a child does not make you saved. Does not make you a child of God. It doesn't matter that you claim to know Him. It's the fruit that you bear does not exude the lifestyle of a believer. If you claim to be an apple tree, but what you bear is an orange, then you are an orange. Are, are you following me? Am I talking to everybody? On Judgment Day, it doesn't matter that your grandmother prayed for you or that your granddaddy bought the stained glass windows or bought the pew in the church or that you gave the most tithes or that you sung on the choir for the past 30 years. He'll look at 
at you and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Because he gave you a choice. He said, I set before you life and death. That means salvation or sin. He says, I tell you to go ahead and choose life. That means choose me because he says in verse 20 that I am life. If you don't have Christ, you don't have life. You are the walking dead. It's time for us to choose him. How much longer will we live in self-idolatry? Will we continue to choose ourselves? Choose what we want to do, what we want to say. Everything is I, 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 and me, me, me. It has nothing to do with you, you, you. Psalm says it's all is not about us, it's all about Jesus, but we don't need it. We tell the most lies in church. We sing, but we never mean what we sing about. We preach, but we don't mean what we preach about. But he's coming back for a church, and it's not the building, it's your heart, and it has to be without
4 says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. You better let these idols go. You better let these traditions that your grandmama and them taught you go. You holding on to these traditions of witchcraft and divination that was brought to your family line. It's a generational curse. That's why you sick and you can't get off the medication right now. Because witchcraft is in your bloodline. And God wants to set you free today. I know it's a funeral to Rome. But God wants to be to you to die to. My God, somebody in here. My God, anybody wants some spiritual Seat 
Jerome's time is done. He's been called. You're waiting on your phone to ring. Will there be one today? Who says, I've heard the voice of the Lord? It doesn't matter that I'm a female or a male. Jesus name. Put your 